Hi, I'm Jackie Topa. I want to show you the new blendability markers by Stampin' Up. One end has a uh, is a narrow end, and the other end has a brush tip. They have a little bit of a lip on there. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of a ridge. So you really have to pull to get them on and off. And by the name blendabilities, I thought you'd really have to blend them, but you kind of don't. You just sort of have to color. And I also wanted to show you the box. It has a flap that folds in and there's a little slit in the top of the flap. It'd be better if I move those. A little slit in the top of the flap and then this little tab goes through that slit. So it was a little hard to figure out what I was doing when I opened my box. So if you don't want to rip your box, it helps to know how it's made. Yeah, I'm just going to do a short video to show you what these markers look like when you're coloring with them. I'm going to show you the dark to light first. You can go light to dark or dark to light. So this is the lightest marker. And I think this is the... I have trouble telling these ones apart. This is the medium marker and it does say light, medium and dark on your markers. That's the medium. This is the dark. So if you don't blend them, I'm going to go out the other way. If you don't blend them, you can see the lines in them, the uh, lines in between. I think even when you go over it a little bit, but the more you work it, and all you have to do is just keep coloring over top. It's not like it's you know, there's any real, <laughs> there's no real talent to it, I guess, is what I wanted to say. So you can still kind of see the lines. The more you uh, work it, the more your line disappears. And then once it dries, it will be variegated. Now one thing, too, with these is you can, it soaks through. So it's almost like a uh, permanent marker. In fact, that's what it feels like is when you color with permanent marker on bristle board. So I'll show you. Okay, I prefer to use the dark first. I just find that it um, it's easier to get rid of the line and to blend it than to go the other way around. Because I found the opposite the opposite way. I was having trouble getting rid of my line. So I want my bottom part here just to be dark. Uh, maybe a little bit around the edge. I'm just going to do one part of the mailbox here for now. This is my medium. And I'll start coloring with my medium. In Carrie Cudney's video she said not to go right to the edge um, because it might bleed through. So just go close but not all the way through. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go medium on the rest of this too. One thing too is it oops, <laughs> I should have used the thin end for that side. It's very quick for coloring. Okay, and then I'm gonna use the light. lightest color. So I thought I'd show you on the mailbox because there's no lines to distract you, but uh, yeah, I like the way it turns out. Okay, the best ink to use is the Memento ink in the black, um, but if you want to try it with um, classic ink, it, it worked fine. This is the Cherry Cobbler. And I'm going to show you the difference of, because you can start with your lightest and go to your darkest, or the darkest and go to the lightest. So I'm going to do one of each. This is the lightest color in the Cherry Cobbler collection. And I think this is oh, the dark one. Next we have our medium color in kind of how you did when you were a kid, little circles. 
I find it's harder to go lighter to darker um, because you can't really doesn't seem like you can pull it as easily. We still have the line there. And this is the darkest. I'm going to use the, the narrow tip for that one. I have that little point. So I find that my line stays when I do it that way. So this one I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to start the dark on the bottom. And then we'll go to the medium. There, when you color and you still see your line, just keep going over that line. With some circles. And it kind of blends right in and disappears. And here is the lightest one. Do the same thing with the lightest color. Again, don't go right to the edges so it doesn't bleed through. And just keep going over the line until it disappears. So I think they blend quite nicely. And I'm just going to do yellow at the top here. Oh, daffodil, I guess. I should be calling them their correct names lightest. This is the, the medium and I'm using the smaller tip for this outside part here. You can actually see a little bit of yellow. I don't know if you can see that on here. You wouldn't think it would show up on that part, but it does. Okay, okay I've got one more I want to show you. These are the little leaves from Lovely as a Tree. I colored these a while ago, and I just want to see if I can add some yellow, if that's going to show. Nope. So I guess once it's color fast, oh, I can see a little bit of a yellow tinge to that. I just wasn't sure. I had left this dry for quite a while. Because I am going to show you what it looks like when you do two-tone. So this is the darkest, I think. Nope. No. Okay, this is the darkest. I'm just going to go darkest around the edge here. Go medium. I'm going to blend that line away there. And go the lightest. And I want to add some yellow. So it kind of almost takes the color away. I wouldn't have thought yellow would show up on top of a, a cherry cobbler, but it does. There. I wanted to show you one more thing before I go back to playing with my markers. Um, this I did by just taking the color remover and drawing lines across the um, spots that I had colored. And I also wanted to show you, I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but I colored right to the edge and I can see it bleeding through a little bit. It didn't right away, but once it sat for a bit, then it did. So you might want to stay back from your edges when you're coloring, especially on colored cardstock.